Hello everyone, my name is Camila Balcon Marquez. I'm Brazilian, veterinarian, and a PhD student in INIA, Uruguay. Today, we will be talking about the evaluation of the different models to define a more suitable residual fee intake estimation in merino sheep. This work is part of RUMIAR, an Uruguayan financing project in which several institutions participate, as well as part of the Smarted project. Sheep were one of the first animals to be domesticated by humans, and for that, are deeply entrenched in human culture. When we talk specifically about Uruguay, we can say that there are more than 6 million sheep. More than 80% are bred to provide wool, and more than 30% are merino. It's important to highlight that we are constantly searching for efficient animals. We can highlight so many important efficiency measures. One of them is the residual feed intake, a measure of feed efficiency. The residual feed intake is calculated by the difference between an animal's observed intake and its predicted feed intake. Animals that eat less than expected are more efficient, and here represented by the green color on the graph. So animals that eat more than expected are less efficient, representing high residual fee intake values. Animals that eat less than expected have low RFI values. Currently, we are searching to increase the production and decrease the environmental impact. Decrease in feed intake without negative consequences on animals' performance and health provides an opportunity to increase the profitability. After commenting all this, our initial questions were What other factors could be included in RFI models? And is it necessary to include estimations of food growth? So let's talk about it and starting with our material and methods. Our study used 567 animals from two generations and sired by 16 rams. Here we can see a small record of the test location, where the animals were fed a Lipton with Lucerne haylage. After 14 days of acclimatization, the trial period was started. The daily feed intake was calculated and animals were weighted every time they went to drink water. In this way, we can obtain between three to four daily weight records per animal. Here we can see with more details the location, the automatic feeder, and the place where the animals went to drink water and, and also were weighted. Here to demonstrate how the step of length and the wool data was collected in the generation of 2019, the measures were made near the last rib of the animal and after five measures, one average was registered for each animal. After collecting data, we start to compare different models for the estimation of receive of intake. For that, we selected a basic model, but what is the basic model? It's a model of feed intake that is widely reported in literature. It includes sex pen trial, average daily gain, mean metabolic weight, and the residuals. To answer our first question, we included birth type, lambing batch year, age at trial, rib eye area and fat thickness in the basic model. It's also important to say that models were compared using a cake information criterion and the correlation between the RFI models. To answer our second question, we included grease fleece weight, clean fleece weight and staple length. These were variables calculated based on weight and production of the animals at one year 
in at the first hearing. So it is important to repeat that this is, this is an estimation based on calculation. Also looking for answer the second question, we included the step of length growth record that were collected on the generation of the 2019. And the models included the staple length growth on trial, the grease fleece weight, and an estimate of average daily gain that did not consider the, the grease fleece weight of the animals. Now we can start to talk about our results and discussion. First, we bring our descriptive table and here we show the mean age of the 2018 and 2019 generation as also the standard deviation and minimum and maximum uh, estimates the the age is in days the feed intake is in kilograms of dry matter the mean metabolic weight is in kilos is also the average daily gain and the gain on trial in the grease fleece weight estimated. And here just to see side to side the variables used. In the first table we can see some estimations as the grease fleece weight. And on the second we can see different variables as the step of length growth uh, record is present. And also the grease fleece weight estimated and the grease fleece weight based on the step length growth is a little bit different as the number of the animals is a little bit lower than the table with the two generations. So let's remember our initial questions. What other facts could be included in RFI models? And is it necessary to include estimations of wool growth in these models? After comparing using the archaic information criterion and the correlation between the models, we found that neither birth type, neither lamb and batch year, age at trial, rib eye area, and fat thickness could be used and neither the wool estimations. The fuel fee intake values estimated with the basic and alternative models were highly correlated. The correlation between the, the, these models was above 0 0.99. So after all that, we can conclude that the basic model is the most parsimonious model and it might be not necessary to include estimations of wool growth in residual fee intake models. So the basic model is the most indicated one and includes only sex pen trial, average daily gain, mean metabolic weight, and the residual. I would like to thank you all for the attention and in addition to my institution for the scholarship and opportunity. I invite everyone to follow us on social media and thanks again for the attention.